How do you take a solid block of plastic and mill it both from the top and the bottom to create a part? Welcome to another episode. Okay, this is going to be a short video. Basically, some people were asking about how I did the two-sided milling out of a solid block of plastic. And so I'm going to show you the CAM, in other words, computer-aided um, milling or manufacturing, I think it is, uh, which is the part of Fusion 360 that allows me to create the tool paths for my CNC machine. And I'm going to use that to show you how I set up the coordinate system so that I could flip the uh, block of plastic from one side to the other and then indicate off one edge and be able to mill everything from uh, the two sides and get a complete 3D part that is milled on both the top and the bottom, essentially on all edges of the part or all surfaces of the part. So let's head to the computer. The trick was to create this frame, which is the part that's in an orange color. That is the same thickness as my actual material. So what I did is I measured the material and then I made this so it was the same thickness, which is 0.371 inches. This frame also has some tabs on it that keep the part from moving around so that I can mill away all of the plastic in between on the inside of the frame and this part as well as inside the part. Now, um, the next thing I'll do is I'll switch to the, the cam and show you the other aspect. There are different setups in here, and the two that are important are the ones labeled top top and top bottom. And what I mean by top top is that the magenta part here, or the purple part, is the top of the case. And this first setup is milling the top of the top case. The second setup is milling the bottom of the top case. For the top top, you'll notice that I have a coordinate system set to this corner right here, on the top of it. So in the milling machine, I used the edge finder to find this edge, and then find this edge, which gave me the zero point here in X and Y. And then for Z, I have a way that I'll show you of setting the cutter height, which is kind of cheating, but it works really well. And it makes sure that the cutter is exactly at the top of the part here. Now for the second setup, which is the top bottom, you'll see that the cordon system has moved to this side and turned upside down. What that means is that when this is in the milling machine and I've finished milling the, the top part of the top case, what I do is I take the material out of the milling machine and then I flip it this way. So when I flip it this way, now I indicate again the same location in other words, the left and front side of the part, and also the top. But it's now relative to the new orientation. And that's pretty much all that it takes. The first thing I do when I want to set up the, uh, the z-axis is move to approximately the center of the part, which is about there. And then I'll uh, take this. I have a, this is uh, using a set screw. So I can just uh, uh, change the height of the cutter by loosening the set screw and then moving it up. And then I move the Z down until I have about the stick out I want. Make sure that I don't have it clamped down at the moment. This is just for demonstration. But basically make sure that the top is clean. And then I hold one finger on here and gently let it touch down and then tighten the set screw. At this point, I go to the computer, set Z to zero, and now it's all set to the top of the part. I then indicate the, the left and front sides, and I'm ready to go. I needed some hold down clamps. At the time, I mentioned that I couldn't find any that were sized for the TIG. Well, it turns out I didn't look hard enough. Uh, they were out there. But the other thing is that I was in a hurry because I was trying to get the parts ready to go to Pennsylvania uh, for my trip to TCS headquarters. Uh, after I got back, I did some more looking and found exactly what I needed. I haven't looked at it yet. I have a box here. So let's have a look at the box and see what's inside.
is from Little Machine Shop. And uh, they had a uh, device that was advertised. I mean, they had parts that were advertised as being a hold down clamp for the tag. So let's see what we have here. Okay, lots of uh, oiled parts and uh, here are the, uh, the blocks, the angle blocks. You can see they have the serrations on them. And then I've got uh, some more angle blocks, some T-nuts, uh, the regular nuts, and Last but not least, the uh, di few different sizes of hold down clamps. So this should work uh, much better than my 3D printed ones because as you can see, these are nice uh, metal hold down clamps. A lot stronger than what I had with the 3D printed. So anyway, I'm pretty excited about that. So the next time I have to mill some parts out of solid plastic, I have good hold down clamps. Mm -hmm.